Hi everybody, I'm Dr. John Newman. I'm a geriatrician and a basic scientist here at the Buck Institute. As a geriatrician, I am really excited about the promise of geroscience interventions uh, to help older adults, to help chronic diseases, to help geriatric syndromes. But aging, aging is a lifelong process. You know, aging is unique, not just because it affects all of us, because, but because it affects all of us throughout our lives. So how do you know if, if your aging is, is happening faster? How do you know if you might benefit from an aging intervention before you get to the point of having chronic diseases? Or how do you know who's really at risk for aging causing serious problems? Uh, this is where uh, we're hoping that biomarkers of, of the mechanisms of aging, geroscience biomarkers, uh, will help us out. Because we can measure aging pretty well when it's, when it's quote unquote advanced. You know, when, when people are starting to slow down, when people are starting to get chronic diseases, we can measure aging pretty, pretty well. We have a much harder time measuring aging 10 or 15 years before that. But now that we're actually understanding the biological mechanisms that drive aging, and it's this, this understanding of, of biology that's leading us to interventions, we can also learn how to measure aging more precisely, measuring the cellular and molecular mechanisms of aging. And this is happening too. So there's a variety of ways out there now, they're all experimental, they're all you know, being tested in the lab and in clinical trials of using blood tests, for example, uh, to try to quantify, measure uh, these mechanisms of aging. Uh, and sometimes this is measuring mechanisms directly, like for example, senescent cells. We can measure uh, how many senescent cells someone has. We can measure the proteins, the, the, inf the inflammatory molecules that are released by senescent cells. We can measure mitochondrial function. We can measure directly the hallmarks of aging, but we can also try to measure the overall effect of aging. Uh, for example, there's a lot of excitement uh, about this idea of an epigenetic clock uh, that our, our, very, our very DNA, our very genes get modified gradually as we get older. Uh, and we can actually measure these modifications of our DNA. It's called DNA methylation. Uh, and if you, if you look at that very carefully, you can map it out so that you can actually guess how old someone is just from looking at the modifications on their DNA. And not just how old they are, because if I want to know how old you are, I can just ask or look at your driver's license. Um, but actually their biological age and how it's different from that number of how old they are. And it's someone's biological age uh, that really determines whether they're at risk for chronic disease or whether they're, uh, whether they're more resilient uh, or more vulnerable. So understanding the, the biological hallmarks of aging is really helping us now to not just develop interventions, drugs, but also develop biomarkers that can help us be much more precise about, uh, about what someone's biological age is, about what is the process that's causing that. Uh, and that gives us the hope of targeted therapies, maybe even earlier in life, to prevent problems and not just treat them.